Amazonia is a very incredible place. It has such a diversity of life that those who live here can observe an unfamiliar species of insect every few days. It's like entering a different world. Flies, beetles, frogs, birds, monkeys and all manner of unseen creatures sing a rhythmic and ever varied chorus of shrieks, whistles, hums, growls and grumbles. This natural wealth is threatened by oil drillers, loggers and poachers. Peru's ecological police rescue animals from traders and smugglers and bring them here to Pilpintuasi, where Gudrun Spira studies and breeds butterflies, as well as caring for the menagerie of animals living in the Amazon Animal Sanctuary. Pedro Bella. He's six years old. He gets he eats four kilos of beef every day. Whether I like him to or not. <laughs> and he's very beautiful. Yeah. Wow. A tourist bought Pedro from some villagers. After three weeks of failing to sell the baby jaguar for a profit, he dumped him at Pilpintuasi in a wooden box wrapped in barbed wire, malnourished. He had to be hand-reared at the sanctuary. Although he is now healthy, he cannot be freed because he would seek food from villagers and they would shoot him. The jaguar's range extends from Argentina to Mexico but numbers are declining due to the destruction of their habitat. He looks like an especially large and muscular leopard, but in behaviour and lifestyle he is more like a tiger. His exceptionally powerful jaws can bite through the skulls of prey animals for a quick kill. Jaguars live alone for most of their lives. I was never sure whether Pedro wanted to play with me or eat me. It's feeding time for the baby sloths, Adriana and Lewis. Even as they munch on fresh and tasty shoots, they never stop hugging each other. Older sloths eat insects, small reptiles, birds, buds and tender shoots, but mostly leaves. These provide very little nutrition, and the digestive process of a sloth can take over a month. As much as two-thirds of their body weight can consist of their stomachs, with multiple compartments full of symbiotic bacteria, which help to break down the tough leaves. Some tourists misguidedly buy animals like these from the markets and bring them to the animal sanctuary in an attempt to help. In fact, the money only pays for the poachers to raid more animals from the rainforest, often by killing the mothers and taking the young. Are you getting this? Yeah. That's awesome. What are you doing there, you little crazy yeah. Tamandua? Check it out. He's, he's, Check it out. I think he's getting, he's <laughs> getting ants ants out of your ears, man. Getting ants out of I mean, you're, you definitely <laughs> haven't showered lately, so. <laughs> That's crazy. That actually feels quite nice. I'm sure. It does. <laughs> you gotta teach your girlfriend to do that, <laughs> or maybe you have a new girlfriend. That's mental. <laughs> I just had my ears cleaned by an anteater thing. <laughs> well, how awesome is that? What a great place this is. <laughs> they grew up in the forest. They know all these animals. They know how they eat. Tapirs evolved from the same prehistoric horse 
as modern horses and rhinos. He has four toes on each front foot and three on the back. His penis is as long as my arm and retractable. His nose is adapted for ground foraging. Lucas was delivered to the sanctuary by locals who killed his mother for meat. Now Lucas is surprisingly relaxed about living next to his natural predator, the jaguar. Whenever I scratch his belly, he rolls over and stretches out with a look of deep satisfaction on his face. It's incredible. So I just saw it once Ooh, yeah, yeah, a few weeks ago yeah. when there was a, a little chick there and he wanted to get it and it was not swimming. It was like a speedboat, half of the body really outside the water. But his weight. Now he's lost weight, now he's about two, five. Ah, uh, that's funny, man. Impervious to the bite. These things are cool. Just doesn't feel it. You know, the skin's pretty tough, so I think it's probably, yeah, doesn't seem to bother. But the little babies that eat ants. Young Winston is both agile and full of curiosity. One of the most satisfying jobs I had at Pilpintuasi was extending his cage, making it big enough to contain large branches. He quickly learned to dart around the branches at lightning speed and once he was old enough to find food independently, he was successfully released into the wild. Luigi came to Pilpin to Assi with a broken right arm. Although he prefers to keep his distance from the other stronger monkeys, he has become adept at supplementing the food he gets from the sanctuary by foraging independently in the trees. The owl monkey's large eyes make him well adapted to nocturnal living. For a creature who relies so much on stealth, accepting food from a human does not come naturally. His instinctive caution will serve him well when he is old enough to explore the forest outside. The less he trusts humans, the safer he will be.
Tony Piranha, the capuchin monkey, has a habit of flirting with human males. She shows jealous behaviour towards women, shrieking, scampering around and doing everything she can to antagonise them. Once she has chased away any opposition, she's triumphant and marks her territory with urine. Her behaviour with me is entirely different. She follows me, wiggles around and performs a dance while chattering constantly and making repeated eye contact. It quickly becomes a standing joke in the sanctuary. Everyone delights in calling her my girlfriend. I learned how to invite her over to the hammock by copying a purring sound that she sometimes made. As a highly social monkey, she has a very expressive face and an extensive vocabulary. She uses her voice to express emotions in a way that we can understand and copy. She is also an expert thief. She especially enjoys the fuss she causes when stealing banknotes, tearing them up just to get a reaction. Even while relaxing in the hammock, she checks my pockets for anything edible or entertaining. She started out living with a group of street children, but was later thrown onto a rubbish dump. Luckily, a tourist spotted her and brought her to Pilpintuasi. She was in need of ongoing medical care, suffering from an infection in her canine teeth that sometimes made her irritable. She rubs her cheeks to relieve the pressure. After treatment, the infection later healed. Tony is a natural born movie star, one of the real characters of Pilpin Tuasi. She is always up to mischief and on the move. All right, Ash, what's going on here? Well, it seems that once again, uh, Tony the Capuchin is in love with me. Oh. This means that she wants to hold my hand <laughs> and look at me, gaze into my eyes, and yes. wish for sweet nothing. And uh, if I move away, if I try and move away, she just... Look at that, she just won't let go of you. She is just absolutely yeah. enamored. Enamorada. Enamorada, too. As they say here. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get much more clingy <laughs> no, <laughs> than no, that. Definitely not. Listen to her voice, too. Yeah. Oh, it's short. Remember on the other side, with Sony, because that's not going to come. Yes. Yep. Lovely. The size of Junior's brain, relative to the rest of his body, is unusually high, even for a primate. Capuchins eat fruits, nuts, seeds, buds, insects, spiders, birds' eggs, and even small vertebrates. They also use tools. Capuchins open crabs, shellfish and dried palm nuts by cracking them between large flat boulders and hammer stones that sometimes weigh as much as the monkeys themselves. Young capuchins learn this process from their more experienced elders. Junior belongs to the most intelligent species of monkey in South America. He's like, stop that! Yeah. <gasps> Do you see him stomping his feet? What? What? What's the matter? You want to play? Huh? Yeah, you want to play? No, you want to climb on me.
Okay, let's see what Inglés thinks of a mirror. Getting close, huh? Fabian. Look at that. <laughs> he doesn't know what to think about it. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. You take it. Oh, he's frightened. Hmm. Not as fascinated as he was the other day with the picture. Which is interesting because this is. He he was the same one who who was. Uh, he's really really fascinated by the photo. Uh, he's pretty fascinated there. Looking, at, he's yeah. See, he look, he's looking from side to side. So he's he's checking out to see if he's if it's actually him. Yeah. Following his motion. That's interesting. He's ducking his head. He's worried about the hell. Yeah, see, look, he's going side, just what you and I would do, so side to side. Yeah. To see if it's actually him. Experimenting with it. Yeah. So we have one minute and a half left in the video. Okay. I'll take it. Yep. Yeah. I'm still rolling. <laughs> like it. No, he was looking at me through the... He was looking at me through the mirror. Uh. Chavo has the bright red face of a bold wakari monkey. They are sometimes known as English monkeys because of the resemblance to the faces of sunburnt tourists. But for this monkey, bright red skin is a sign of good health. Chavo has a broken right foot and needs regular medicine for his epilepsy. But he likes to come down from the trees to groom others and doesn't mind if they are monkeys, humans, or even sloths. Ash is paddling his canoe in the wild Amazon while the, while the monkeys are overseeing the project, ensuring that he does it, that he cleans the, the lagoon properly. And just for additional sex appeal, you get you get the full hairy Tarzan look as well. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> it's it's the wild man. He is he is he is completely acclimated to the Amazonian culture. Uh, no, 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 monkeys! Come on, come on! Come oh, on. the monkeys are going crazy. Come play with the uh, canoe. He want he really wants to jump in. This is Nico. Come on, Nico, jump! There you go. Come join the fun. Yeah. Oh, but that was no, only a temper. Uh, he's he's afraid. He's uh, <laughs> Nico. You have a fear factor to you. The alpha male has got some fear in him. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I know that Ash really wanted to have his buddy there.
So, monkey balls. What are they? Why are they? How do you make them? Well, this is a monkey ball. We make lots of them. We make them from a mixture of biscuits and bananas. Mm, proportions, seven biscuits to one banana. Mix it all up and feed them to the monkeys. So, I'm going to show you how. Okay. <clears throat> we take monkey biscuits and we put them in the coffee grinder. Like this. And we have a beautiful um, plate of dust. <clears throat> Next, we take two soft bananas and we peel them and put them in a plate and mash them up. I need a fork. So, we'll go with the bananas, mash them up real good and make a kind of whisked banana. A little tricky at first but yeah. Once we get going then it becomes a lovely soft whoops, meringue okay okay step three oh, apparently he's come to say hello uh, now we have a very nice soft banana and we put the crunched up monkey biscuits can you hear her screaming at me she's in love uh, Crunched-up monkey biscuits, they're made of uh, nutritious stuff, fish meal and uh, veg all mixing together to make the biscuits. And we just have to fold the two things in together to make a nice paste. This takes a little while, so we shall proceed to the final stages once I've mix that up. Okay, so we have some very sticky banana and biscuit paste. Uh, so, we're almost there. We just need to take some paste, roll it into a sausage, so we can see how much we're taking. Roll it very simply between the hands to make a monkey ball. Okay, you may be wondering why we uh, don't just give the monkeys the biscuits and the bananas. Well, the bananas are great, they love the bananas, but uh, the biscuits is where the, the nutrition is. And like all intelligent animals, nutritious stuff just doesn't taste too good. So this is why we mix the, the biscuits with the bananas and this way the monkeys don't mind eating it so much okay so you can see we have whoops a few monkey balls there and we've got a lot more to make so here we have the finished product a lovely plate of monkey balls uh, they're really tasty look I'll eat them Mm-hmm. Really nice. Banana. I'm going to go feed them to the monkeys.